in science, you make a bunch of assumptions that aren't justified in the beginning. They just come out of nowhere. You just say, what if there's a material world and that's primary? What if, you know, we can interact with it and it reliably gives us, you know, uh, evidence, gives us data back. And then what if we're, we can come up with theories that actually tell us something about the way the world is. And this is just when this was first kind of proposed in roughly the 1700s, it was just an idea. It was like a game basically. And it turns out it, it's a game that works incredibly well. You know, the fact that I'm being able to live stream with you now is because the game worked so well of coming up with ideas, hypotheses, testing them against the world. Um, and so to me, what that says is there's something beyond my mind, beyond your mind, beyond all of our individual human minds. There's something there. There's some world outside of us. Um, it seems that seems to be the most sensible, the simplest way to, to think about why it would be the case that if I measure something and then you measure it, and we come up with the same measurement, you could say, well, perhaps we're both plugged into the matrix and some computer is feeding us back, you know, detecting that we're doing this measuring, there's actually nothing there and it's a simulation and it's running back to us the same data. And but that's very messy. And, um, there's a principle called Occam's razor, which is that you should, you should try and keep your explanations as simple as possible. Um, and I think the idea that there genuinely is something out there, um, that we're measuring is, is a good assumption. And the thing is, is that physics has done a very good job with first with understanding matter as energy, uh, you know, with Einstein and then with quantum mechanics, this game of predicting what it's going to do and how it's going to behave. They're incredibly accurate. They're doing a good job of it. They seem to be describing it very well. Um, but an interesting thing that I think isn't, isn't spoken about a lot is that we don't know what matter is. We don't know what it's made of. We don't know what its essence is. And there's a sense in which all descriptions of reality proceed. They're all relative. They're all relational. They all, um, take the form of, you know, like an equation, right? Where it's like something happens over here and that corresponds to this thing happening over here. But you're always saying something relative to something, you know, this pushes against this and there's a counteracting force and there's just all this structure. But all descriptions are structure. They're abstractions. They're not descriptions of essence. So when you come down to saying, so first I think it's it's reasonable to believe that there's something beyond my mind. I, I this could all be a dream. Maybe, you know, I'm the only person in existence and this is some, some crazy dream, you know, that's come to be a solipsist is that position. And it's actually, it fits with the data of experience. You know, you could be the only, from your perspective, this could all be a, be a dream, you know, um, and you're the only mind in existence. We're all kind of robots or not even robots. There's, there's just the dream. There's no world out there. Um, but if you assume there is the world, um, and you ask what it's made of, if you say it's made of matter, that kind of doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> um, quantum mechanics, you know, is what matter is made of is, is, is quantum states. And they're something like probability. They're something like information. Uh, there's something like things being one way as opposed to not another way. Um, there's a lot of philosophy that kind of talks about whether that maybe that's what mind is. Maybe consciousness mm -hmm. is the thing at the bottom and that's what gives rise to kind of what we call quantum mechanics. And, but, no matter what you, I'm not really interested in, you know, uh, what, what words we use to describe that stuff that reality is made of. Um, and partly because this is why I'm here, you know, talking about consciousness and not talking about the material world as much, because the thing that's important is the ground of being for any being that can experience the world, which is a being that has consciousness. The ground of being is beyond concepts. You know, if I say the material world, great. I've, I've made, you know, I say the material world exists. I've made a claim, you know, I can have fun feeling proud of myself that I've, I've made some, some claim, but everything I'm kind of talking about here is that the valuable stuff in life is, is getting beyond those, those thoughts, those intellectualizations, those arguments, um, and just sinking into the kind of the, the pure being the kind of ground of being, which is this qualitative character of consciousness where it's just there and it's, it's beyond intellectualizing. 
the question of the fact that the essence of the material world or the essence of the world beyond my private mind is ultimately unknowable. That's true with consciousness as well, in the sense that while consciousness knows appearances, what it's made of, what its essence is, is beyond us. That will always be a mystery. There's just this fact of reality and it's just there and it's deeply mysterious. And I think I, I put up a guided meditation called uh, Recognizing the Mystery of Consciousness. It's just a meditation where you pay attention to your breath. And the idea was to try to get to this character of consciousness where you can feel that it's just there. And once you strip back the thinking about the breath, it's just, it's, it's deeply mysterious as to what it really is. And you can ask yourself questions like, what's it made of? What qualities does it have? But like, what it is, is just beyond us.